Welcome to Date with Danu right here on High TV, your luxury channel. Today we're talking about a partnership that we as a brand are involved in as well. The Ceylon Literary Festival that is to take off very soon and at the same time it's an important thing to incorporate reading in some form. Now, as an avid reader, I've always taken a book around with me so that I could hit the person who tells me to read. But let's see if this show will make me think otherwise. Welcome to the show. Hi, I'm Ashok. Hi, I'm Taranga. And we're here to go on a date with Danu. Danu. Why are we here, Taranga? We're doing something special. Very special. And you better be there where we're running the Ceylon Literary Festival, Ceylon Literary Arts, Literature and Arts Festival. And it is in Colombo. It's in Kandy for two days and Colombo for three. We are excited to bring uh, the HSBC Ceylon Literary and Art Festival, the inaugural edition to, uh, into Sri Lanka. We hope to have two sessions, one in Colombo and one, of course, in Kandy. And we invite all of you avid book lovers and readers to come over and experience this. Welcome to the show and we have our guests on the set and I have to say uh, the only person who has convinced me to read a book in my whole life uh, after Radiant Way, even that I stopped halfway, uh, is the man who owns this very fashionable device. It's That's a, where it went. Yeah, it's a mobile phone and I think only you use it. What do you mean? This particular, this, this, if it has, it looks like it survived the war. Well, it survived you <laughs> now. No, but the vibrating in this is very good, right? Yeah, well. No, I'm serious. Of course you're serious. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say, like, you know, the, these old ones are really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice and loud. Yeah, very. It always goes off in public places. And, and this works, right? And yeah. you have communicated with people. Occasionally. Occasionally. <laughs> That's amazing. So he's the owner of it and he's my favorite author in Sri Lanka, the one and only Ashok Ferry. Thank you for having me on the Thank show. Thank you for being here. The, the only book that I've read from first to last is Copy to People and I found it absolutely hilarious. And that was the reason I collected the rest of his books. I will get into it. You better. Uh, yeah. Soon. I've read Time chapters. is running out. I know. You know, you're more valuable when you're not around. Oh, well, this is yeah. perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Can so I die wait. now? <laughs> yes. Uh, I would also like to introduce uh, from British Council, we have Orlando. Uh, thank you for being with us with a stunning tie. Uh, we have Taranga, who is here from HSBC, who presents the festival. And we have a young, upcoming, twice nominated author, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Kiara, Hi. thank you for being Hello. here. All right, so now introduced everyone. Uh, to start things off, now now we are having a bit of a literary festival overdose. Now we are having many happening. Hundreds of them. Now we didn't have anything. Nobody bothered whether we were reading or not. Now we are all reading. Please tell me what is the Ceylon Literary Festival all about? Well, I think you just hit the nail on the head. It's to try and encourage young people to read. So it's very difficult because, because nobody actually reads nowadays. Uh, it's like this phone, you know. People who read books tend to use phones like this. <laughs> Um, so, we're, we're trying to be cunning about it, and in this festival, we're, we're letting all students go free. So, if you're at O level, A level, graduate, postgraduate, just go online, register, you get the festival free. See, reading, it's not that people don't want to read, there's so many things that can divert the attention from reading, because a lot of things are so much more easier to grasp your knowledge. Like, why would I read about the Titanic when I can watch a documentary about the Titanic and learn that information? Uh, where do you think you will give the reason saying, you know, book is so much more interesting to do so to a youngster? Well, I think if, if you're a youngster and you're sitting there listening to the author talk about the struggles he has to write that book and you hear him read a page or two of it, it comes alive. I've just come back from Kolkata where I read from Unmarriageable Man and it's extraordinary the effect it had on, on, you know, because when it's spoken, then you realize, gosh, that's, that is there in the book mm. for you to imagine those words. Uh, I, I think 
the trouble nowadays is that that literature has been made easy. It's canned. It's it's given in bite-sized pieces, yeah. so you don't feel you have to read it all. Yeah. So we need to try and encourage young people to actually start at the beginning and finish the book, and then think what it meant to them, yeah. what it means. Interpret it the way you would like it to. Yeah. I have to ask you this. Is just a question that I need to know the answer to. When you went to Kolkata, was this on roaming? Well, of course it was on roaming. The fact that it didn't work is neither here nor there. <laughs> it did work in places. Really? I know it's near the airport it switched off. Or it didn't like Kolkata I don't think airport. it can handle so much of a stress. Well, it can, it can. So I, I trained it well. I know. Gosh, you're, you're so rude <laughs> on this show. I won't bring my phone next time. No. <laughs> That'll teach you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, Orlando, we were all talking about our fond memories with the British Council. I think we all know there's all of us just to look important, to look intellectual or to follow somebody who is there, who we have had our interest on and we have definitely got ourselves to the British Council. There are different reasons, I have to tell you. It's not only about the books. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also the fact that, you know, there have a lot of magazines, as Taranga was very much interested in, glossy magazines to look at pictures. Um, I'm actually a person who loves comic books. You know, it, it, it has color, and I love uh, things on those lines. Tell me about the British Council. It has been here for so long. It has, it has always upgraded, given something new. Uh, what is the ratio now in terms of people taking a physical book and going out? Great question. Well, thank you very much for inviting me on your show. Thank you. Uh, we have three libraries, one in Colombo, one in Kandy, one in Jaffna. And we're very proud of the libraries. Uh, as you say, they have great collections of manga and graphic novels, as well as the classics. Uh, and we're trying to always refresh our stock with new novels. So we've just had a recent push, which which I've, I've made actually for the team on green literature and nature writing, which is a big thing in the UK now and a big thing around the world. Uh, climate change, of course, affects us all, but it, it, it gets us thinking and there are so many different dimensions to it. But to come back to your question, uh, where we've been most innovative is perhaps with our digital library. So perhaps not available on Ashok's phone, but um, those with a smartphone can now have access to the British Council's digital library, and that enables them to access millions of books, lots of research, so it's very useful for students, huge research databases, graphic novels and comics, but also audio books. Many people like to listen when they're on the bus or on the train or um, doing the housework or whatever. It is, as opposed to, to, to reading the digital book rather than uh, the, the traditional classic. Lots of magazines, study English resources, all sorts in, in the digital library. In terms of our membership, I think we still have about 8,000 active members across Sri Lanka. And we're trying to innovate as well with a new book box project. So for certain schools, we'll distribute uh, boxes of books for them to then distribute to their students and once they finish they'll return the box to us and we'll send out another box and mm -hmm. that's the idea is, as, as you've been saying in Ashok, to get people reading. The reason why I asked you was the ones who did it like how we did where we will take the book get the stamp on it saying okay this date to this date is there an interest to having that physical book because I've always loved collecting the books is that still there? I think there's nothing that quite compares to having of course. The, the, the book in your hands. And, and um, some people who are thinking in terms of the second-hand bookshops always like to give the volume a sniff. What does it have the odour of the bookshop yeah. or previous owner, or, or, which is quite an interesting habit that I've spotted some people in bookshops. Not in, in brand new bookshops, of yeah. course, but oh. I think... Um, you know, with your graphic novels uh, that you've related, the, the, the manga or the comics, uh, that, that's something else as well, the pictures that really take you on an adventure. Mm -hmm. um, and I think our young readers really appreciate illustrated text and illustrated books. Correct, because it has, the world has come to it because including Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, everything is so visual oriented. So it's the less words they see, the more attracted they are to it. All right, we need to get into a break. We're going to come back and speak to 
Uh, I wanted to say the two youngsters, but there's <laughs> one youngster when we do come back on the other side. Welcome back to the show. You know, during this break, I was told that that phone had fallen into the loop. Now, must you give away all this info? Was it sanitized afterwards? Certainly not. You used it. Hey. So, so <laughs> that's sanity enough I'm for really me. I'm really sad about this. Why couldn't you tell me? Now I understand the stain. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. Don't believe you. But I must tell you, only those phones will work through anything. Yeah, um, yeah. It can survive even yeah. another world war. <laughs> it can. Um, let's start with Tharanga. Now, you are involved in this once again. You're, uh, you, uh, HSBC as a brand has always promoted and supported local endeavors. And at the same time, creating a space for youngsters to sort of come forward. Is that the outlook that you all took with the Ceylon Literary Festival? Firstly, thank you for inviting me uh, to speak about the HSBC Ceylon Literary and Art Festival. Uh, we are absolutely excited to present uh, the festival, the inaugural edition of the festival this year. Uh, so fundamentally, there are two reasons that wh why, why we actually forayed into this arts and culture space. Traditionally, we've been much into sports, Sport. mm. um, a lot into uh, you know, the f lifestyle piece. Uh, but this is the first time that we are foreign, uh, probably into a large, to a large extent, the art and culture space. Fundamentally, two reasons. And we are an international bank. So what we want to basically do is, uh, given our purpose, we want to open a world of opportunity for our clients. In doing so, we look at two dimensions. One is to bring the best of the world into Sri Lanka, and also to take the best of Sri Lanka to the world. And, and by doing so, I think what we, uh, our ambition also is to get a new set of readers, by which I mean the next gen uh, of readers, because that's really important to kind of take this whole thing forward. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the fundamental reasons why we are really excited to present the HSPC Ceylon and Art uh, Festival. That's amazing. Now, tell me, at this young age, we have already been shortlisted twice over. Uh, Tell me about this love for writing. Reading is one thing. Um, well, I think uh, I have been writing as long as I can remember. Well, um, I like to think of it as like it's my way of engaging with the world and like my way of expressing myself because, um, <clears throat> because I kind of feel like myself the most when I write. I think uh, for some it could be uh, music, some, for some it could be painting, cooking, whatever. Like for myself, um, I, <clears throat> I, I feel like myself the most when I like form the perfect sentence, which I think is like, like I am happy, if I'm happy with something that I write, I think that is what I expect from writing. So that Do is Do you think you're stronger in your communication through through writing then? I also talk a lot, but ah. uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, that's the best way I can express myself. And uh, I like to write about things that I strongly feel about, like especially as a woman um, in a culture like ours. Uh, so we have a lot of things to talk about, like uh, not just, not that fiction is the only way to talk about problems, there is non-fiction and everything. But uh, I think fiction is like a beautiful way to talk about the things that you strongly feel about. So that is the relationship that I have with writing. Ashok, tell me about the youngsters today. Uh, your books have really cut through the audience from old to young. They can still find something relatable there and they find it you know, they leave with a bit of a smile on their face when they move to the other page. Um, I know we curate certain types of books for certain people. In terms of Sri Lanka, what would you say Sri Lankans have this love towards? They're easily drawn to. Uh, there was a very young person who came to me just the other day, about a week ago, 
And she said, you know, I picked up your book and I felt at home, she mm. said. And that's so, a great compliment. So, yeah, and, and it's indefinable. What is home? I mean, there, it's such a complex society we have here. So when I first started writing, I assumed this will appeal to a very particular generation of elderly aunties mm. between the age of 80 and 85 or something. Do you know? And then... You didn't want your books to sell much, did well, you? Well, the thing is that the books were selling mm. and I thought there can't be this, this many aunties. That's because they've forgotten every time they bought it. Well, maybe. Yeah, they were, or they were, yes, They're like, exactly. oh, I didn't buy Ashok's book. Yes, oh, let's get another one. <laughs> yeah, get another one, yeah. A great person. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, that's the beauty of a book. It means different things to different people. So, uh, you know, it's not like a film. One mm. film is the same for everyone because you see the same characters. But a book is all in the imagination. Correct. So 50 different readers will see 50 different stories. And in a way, that's why a festival is so important because it brings the books alive. It's not just a book on a piece of paper. You can hear the author. You can browse in the bookstore. You can talk to fellow uh, festival girls and discuss mm. wh what you liked about that book or what you didn't. So, so perhaps... In that way, it's good for youngsters today who aren't so much into books per se. Mm. Now, this festival is very different because you're having different types of talks that's going to add a lot of value to this. I'm going to ask one of you to just give me a few of it and as to why. We'll start with just one, first one, and then we need to get into a break and we'll come back to the rest. Well, for instance, there's a, a very famous antique uh, antiques person in, in England who does a show called Antiques Road, Road Trip and he's just completing a trilogy set in Sri Lanka uh, with a hero called Mr. Ashok but, but what's important is that it's antiques and it's literature so it, it's, it's kind of nice to you know get people involved in both somebody mm. actually asked me can we bring along an old piece of furniture and get him to identify it I said yeah bring anything you want mm. But uh, so, so we're trying to broad base it so that it goes out and that's just one of the many things. We've got uh, Nicole Fahi who's an absolute fashion icon and, and a really iconic figure. Um, she's no longer a fashion designer, she is now a sculptor. But the fact remains that you can get her views on why she swapped things, what happened, you know, what, and, and which is more rewarding for her. Or is it that she just went on? So, so things like this, there are many, many different topics. It's not just, as I said, not, not just books, but we've really broadened it out. Yeah. We'll speak more about the broadened topics because uh, some of the topics are really interesting and very relatable. Even if you're someone who is not into reading, you'll definitely love the sessions. We'll speak more when we do come back to stick around. Uh, and at the same time, Taranga is treating us for something really nice after this show. And... I was like, did you bring your wallet to see <laughs> his wallet is so thin? That's because he has a MasterCard. Welcome back to the show. We are speaking about the Ceylon Literary Festival and it's happening in Kandy and in Colombo. Uh, it's definitely one of a kind considering the fact that there are topics that are very diverse and very interesting and one of the topics that are going to be discussed is AI. Now I was actually speaking to Dima from our team as well about you know AI is uh, I don't, I'm not against it, it's just like yeah you're going to go out of job soon. I was like yeah that's true they might just make a better looking version of me. <laughs> and will not make that's not possible sure no it's possible there are few things I would like to fine tune like the packs and then <laughs> they might also get every word grammatically correct that will rest some of these Colombo people who always find fault with my English you know they might just think we like the AI version only for me <laughs> but this AI is definitely a great thing but at the same time if it's used for the right thing now I'm sure even a lot of banks have like moved on from having a personalized service and they're just sticking to like a digital counter. Tell me about, okay, let's, I'll ask the two authors who are here. What about, is, about AI. Yeah. 
Well, I really think we're going to be out of a job. What do you think, Kiara? I don't actually think so. Because now when you take ChatGPT, um, I think it's working with data. That is, uh, like, uh, until only 2016 only, they have uh, the data in their database. So after that, it has not been updated. So apart from fiction, I mean, like, when you use AI for other purposes, now there's that restriction. And um, I think, like, there's, I have tried ChatGPT. I have. I have tried like uh, to write poetry and stories just out of curiosity, like to see what it what creates. But uh, I think like, uh, you know, like how we write with our personal experiences. So that part is missing. So mm. there is a story there, like there, there, they use imagery and all kinds of literary devices. But then again, that, that uh, like the home kind of feeling that you said, yeah. uh, the they human came up element to you. Is but and, but yeah. now, uh, recently at a, at a festival in Bhopal, there was a publisher who said that when she gets manuscripts, she puts them into AI and that gives suggestions to her, which she then sends back to the prospective author. So, so it's now, it's so insidious that it's like working with AI. Exactly. Who yeah. is the master? Who is the slave? Yeah. After a while, it'll be AI saying, "We need a book on hairdressing or yeah. gambling," and then you will be put to work writing that book, mm. and AI will strictly supervise what you're writing. Yeah. Because that's guaranteed sales. And but then again, like it will be giving the same result for you and me, and like for everybody. So there's true, a problem with true. uniqueness. Yeah. But it's quite efficient. Uh, so, what you're saying is that things will become much more generic as time yeah. goes on. And hasn't that happened anyway? In so much of life, you know? Look at Hollywood actors, they all look the same, yeah. all generic. Not yes, you, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> wanted to ask you, what is your take on AI? Well, I'm minded to uh, recall that great novel by a friend of Sri Lanka, A.C. Clarke, 2001 A Space Odyssey, which of course, I'm sure we've all seen it, uh, the film, uh, tr tr tremendous film and such vision, uh, slightly uh, sinister, I guess, mm. in terms of the ending and what is, 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 is perhaps coming our way. Of course, AI is a big part of everything now, so with thinking about how it can support teachers in, in another area of our work, teaching English. Uh, you mentioned putting people out of work, but of course, people still learn from people and with people, and the personal touch that writers will bring, I don't think can, can be replaced by AI in the near future, but it, 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 it is a concern and I think publishers and editors around the world are really grappling with this conundrum and probably writing it into their contracts, mm. uh, ensuring in the way that teachers are having to, to try and dissuade and find ways to dissuade their students from plagiarism and, and the temptation of using AI to do their homework for them. That's true. Uh, but, but ultimately, um, it's going to create more problems, I think, if people don't learn how to do things and, and aren't using their own creativity to, to generate their own pieces of, of artwork and literature and creativity. Yeah, well, it's the same thing. Like, you know, I, I'm one of those people who likes to like fill forms, like write things down, go to a bank and get all the help I can. But now when you go to a bank, you barely have anyone at the counter. Literally, there's no one. You have to just, sometimes I have put my check in, not got the money because I have put it into the wrong machine. So these kind of issues do happen. So I wanted to ask you now, you all have very much, most of the banks internationally are going very like people-less. So what I can say is uh, we obviously are adopting technology to make things easier for customers. I mean, that's the fundamental reason why technology is important. And as you mentioned, uh, aspects like AI are pretty much part and parcel of that. Mm. Uh, but what I can say is from a, from a uh, festival point of view, it'll be really interesting to listen to that seg segment called AI, uh, who the, the manuscript, <laughs> uh, like, which yeah. is the kind of intellectual <laughs> conversations we'd but like to bring to the platform uh, and get our you know, followers and clients to kind of you know, listen to some of these because it's and important see, yeah. that you understand both uh, sides of the coin. Mm. Um, now, body positivity is also another topic. 
how is this connected to literature? Well, in, in lots of ways. I find that it has come forward as time has gone on uh, in the last kind of half century. Uh, you, it's, it's now quite difficult to have an anti-hero as you did in the old days. Uh, people, I think they've been so influenced by Hollywood that your hero has to look good, your heroine has to look absolutely immaculate. She can leap down from the Empire State Building and kill however many people, but she's got to be absolutely perfectly done. So what's really happening is that young people today are imagining that they, ha they, they can't step outside their home without being perfectly quaffed and shod and dressed. Mm. It, it's really worrying. But what's worse is that where does that leave the rest of us who aren't perfect? Because we, we, have, we get a bum rap on this. You know, I mean, like, you know, uh, obviously the job will go to the person who is more pre presentable or better looking. Mm. Not the yeah. one with the better talent. Not the one with the better talent. Mm. And, and, and uh, it's, it's, it's so in literature. I, I, I think heroes nowadays have to be likable mm. or lovable. So is, would you say you're asking the authors to redefine how they will portray or characterize a person? Saying, okay, the guy who falls in love with this girl was plumpy and he was, he was cuddly and... Well, you see, AI a, will tell you not to put that in. Yeah, had a black mole on his nose. Yes. Uh, uh, I think that's gone. Even I will not watch this film. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but uh, I, I mean, it's not specifically about, <laughs> yes. about books, but, but about the way people are thinking now, mm. because that will affect the words they write yeah. in the future. So that it's a sort of self-serving sort of uh, cycle. But, but to make it more relatable and not make it so unachievable in terms of visualizing your characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, 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 a, it's deeply worrying, yeah. I, I, I find. Yeah, I think it's true because I think any of the movies that have come out inspired by a book, I think the book looks more realistic than in the movie. You're like, wow, is this what they were trying to portray? And you're like, then, you f then when you try to read the book, you have that image so stuck in your head and yeah. you can't think of it in a different way. Yeah. 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 So it's like... You can't have like a, you can't have a fat Jack saving Rose in the Titanic. No. Yeah. It just wouldn't work. It would It'd work. be comedy. Sad, right? Sad. It's, it's like really fat sad. people I mean, don't fall in love at all. Yeah. It's like those films you watch, the biopics, and right at the end in black and white, they show the pictures of the real people. Yeah, and you're, like, and you're <laughs> somewhat deflated when you see the real people, you know? You can't imagine they did those heroic things. I know. I know. All right, we are getting into a break. We'll see you on the other side. Do stick around. Welcome back to the show. We were just having a chat during the break about how much we are kind of going back in certain ways. Like if you do take the old uh, oil paintings that you see of all our leaders and country heads and even the ones who are in the big Buckingham Palace, they have all had a bit of a, you know, a bit of Photoshop done on them. They have painted them nicer. Because if somebody's going to do a painting of me, I'll want them to like, trim me down and just, I don't want an, like, an ugly thing hanging. What thing is ugly? And no, like, hang uh, oh, hanging on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Censor oh, that, cut that. <laughs> uh, even Winston Churchill got his painting burnt. He didn't like the real thing. It was like, this is how I look. Oh, so it covers the shock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's quite interesting. So apart from the whole, the topics that we are speaking about, can, you, can I know any other topics that, that you would like to highlight? Well, uh, lots. Feminism. 
What's happened with, we had the world's first woman prime minister. Where are we now? Mm. Almost no representation in parliament. It's disgraceful, I think. But, but attitudes have really not changed. I mean, Kiara yeah. will have much more to say on this than I, I Yeah, will. I think it's, it's high time that we start uh, talking about it, like representation. And also, like, when you take about, uh, when you take uh, female writers, uh, like uh, in, in the olden days, they only spoke about their issues because it was just their frustration. So now our target is to move on to a society where, like, you don't write as a woman, you write as a writer. So, like that is equality. That's the, yeah, so we yeah, will be absolutely. talking about like there's a there's a special segment on feminism yeah. and uh, especially focusing on female writers. Yeah. Tell me about the authors who are flying down for this. Lots and lots. Uh, Sir David Hare, one of the greatest playwrights uh, living. Um, Louis de Bernier, that the British Council is bringing down, who's really famous for his book uh, Captain Corelli's Mandolin. He's written many others since then, and really beautiful books. Uh, lots of Shribani Basu, who wrote the book Victoria and Abdul, from which the film oh, was wow. made. Louise Doughty, who's had hit after hit after hit, and she's got a new book coming out, but her last one was Bird. It's, I think it's just called Bird, or Bird in the Winter, I think it's called. Uh, and so on. There are many, many authors. Sonora Ja, who's written a book called How to Raise a Feminist Son. Mm. Uh, so we've got lots of, from all over, lots from America, some who very kindly offered to come on their own Trone. and appear, Vivi Ganeshanandan, Shyam Selvadare, who's launching his book on the life of the Buddha. It's a hugely eclectic And how many list. are we expecting? 22 from outside and 20 of our finest from, yeah. from inside. Okay. Uh, and all these festivals are starting in Kandy, uh, yes. if you can tell me. Yeah, so I think what we are really excited about is if you look at uh, uh, the interests, there's two key hubs in Sri Lanka. One is obviously Kalamu, the other is Kandy. And Kandy is also known for a lot of the, the big names in art, for instance, like uh, people like George Keats, Stanley Kirinde, David Painter, they all started in Kandy. So it's really exciting to go back to the roots and then obviously have the conversations where it all started. Mm. So we start on the 8th and 9th in Kandy, and then we come down to Colombo on the 10th, 11th and 12th. So we are also excited to um, uh, invite our clients uh, who get access to this uh, free of charge. Uh, and more importantly, the next gen, the, gets the, free the, as the well. kids get in free. So that's really what, uh, what, what we're really excited about. The key about. message here. Yeah, and not only, it's also like, it's, it's not only books, it's also a lot of things related to art. That's right. Yeah, and that, that makes it so much more interesting and it gives a diversity. Uh, in, terms of, um, in terms of paintings, Candy is known for its historic value and also some of the uh, amazing work that has come from there. Like, are we showcasing artists as well? So I think Ashok probably uh, be Yes, I, I, I'm not directly involved in that, but we are. Uh, uh, Helga is talking about Helga's folly. Yeah. I mean, there, there are lots of, lots of quite esoteric things. Right. Uh, and there's a lady who's doing a, a series of lectures on David Painter. Yeah. Uh, and Curado is having an yes, art, art exhibition. Absolutely. Curado is having the exhibitions. So there's a lot going over and above the, the, the core literary bit, mm. which is what I'm concentrating on, but there's lots more because naturally if you come to spend the day, you don't necessarily want to sit there and listen to author after author, you might want to dip yeah. your toe into these other things. Uh, Consider the fact that British Council is in three locations, would Jaffna be something that you all would be interested in next time? Absolutely, yes, we're, we're really excited and in fact we're already talking about the possibility of next year's Ceylon Literary Festival where that might go. Um, and as you'll probably know, the UK has uh, um, literary festivals coming out of its ears. You have the Hay on Y Festival, the Bath Children's Festival, the Edinburgh International Literature Festival, the Cheltenham Literature Festival, the Bradford Literature Festival. There are literature festivals in the Lake District now about nature writing, mountain writing, mountaineering. There are so many different genres and so much possibility. I think it's really exciting. And just to build on, on what my panelists have been talking about, so Sir David Hare, uh, he's written plays, and of course some of these then get staged. So we're really excited that there'll be a National Theatre Live screening during the course of the yeah. festival of, of Straight Line Crazy, one of his recent plays. 
So we're bringing a bit of theatre. Uh, and uh, Ashok mentioned Helga's Folly. So Minette de Silva, currently the wonderful 88 Acres exhibition at the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art. So all those festival goers will be able to when it comes to Colombo, take a side trip to the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art and, and dip into that fabulous exhibition. We're really excited to be a part of it and to be uh, inspiring the next generation of, of writers, the, the students uh, and, and the young graduates because they'll be the next wave of, of Sri Lankan Booker Prize winners, Gratian Trust, Gratian Prize winners. Uh, it's a really exciting period to be promoting literature mm. in Sri Lanka and to be a part of that. And I think in Sri Lanka, literature has been a part of its culture from way back in time, considering the fact that we had one of the biggest libraries in South Asia with the Jaffna Library. We had so many things that we were proud of, and our literature dates back uh, so many centuries, making it such a valuable place to actually promote literature in some form. Um, I know, I think I always say like fighting war, you know, everything is fine, but do not destroy what is not meant to be only for today, it's forever. forever. We lost such a beautiful thing called the Daphne Library, which is, which is a pain, but, uh, but it's nice to see that you know, we are finding ways of rebuilding it. Uh, time for a break, we'll come back and tell you how you can buy your tickets, where you can purchase all what you need to enter these sessions and meet these wonderful people of life. Welcome back to the show. We wanted to speak about the locations and how you can get yourself to be a part of the Ceylon Literary Festival. All right, so let's speak about the locations. It's happening in Colombo and Kandy, but in some key places. Yes, uh, in Kandy, we start at uh, Trinity College on, on the Thursday, and on Friday, it's at the Hotel Swiss. Uh, and it's half a day on the Friday, because even authors need a break. <laughs> and then on, we bus them all down to Colombo, so that's Saturday morning, or all of Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, it's at the public library, Vihara right. Mahadevi Park. So again, we're trying to make it as accessible as possible, and so that people don't feel, young people don't feel intimidated that they've got to go to a five-star What is your hotel. age limit of young? I, I think postgraduate, anyone who can beg, borrow, or steal a student card gets it. Oh, you need to have a student card. You, a student card or a letter from a teacher. Oh, right, yeah? okay. Those are the, one or other, right? And you can go online and, and register. Then, if I can add, I think in Kandy, we hope to invite about ten schools around Kandy to represent uh, the young next generation to come in. And there's a writers' workshop being planned. Uh, this is for age groups between 14 and 18. And a similar uh, kind of series of exercises will happen in Colombo. There is a writers' workshop. There is, you know, uh, storytelling, uh, you know, workshops, etc. So that's happening in Colombo. So there's lots galore uh, for the younger generation. So we we invite everyone to check out uh, the triple w silanliteraryfestival uh, uh, dot com and get more information because there's lots in store. There, the information's all there. Amazing. Uh, now there is also for someone who wants to buy all these authors who are coming down all their books, including the local authors, you can do so because all these places will have bookshops. Yes, the adjac uh, adjacent to the festival area will be, it's Sarasavi who is our sponsor. They will have a bookstore with all these books. And they've been really dynamic for once. All the books are there ahead of time. Right. Uh, uh, they've, they've, they've taken the trouble to order pretty much everybody's books ahead of time. That's amazing. So you can even get it personally autographed. Yeah, and that's the best part about it. Uh, is there anything that you would like to add? Just to say, it's um, it's wonderful to be a part of this this purple patch of all these Sri Lankan cultural festivals. Someone who works in cultural relations, 
and uh, I know I'm, I'm here representing the British Council, but the Goethe Institute, the Alliance Francaise, it's going to be a very international festival, and it's always exciting when you have international perspectives, uh, and that can only strengthen and, and enhance the, the domestic culture if you're really rubbing shoulders and, and sparking ideas off each other. So great to be a part of it. Um, I think making conversation about art is anyway interesting and especially um, when you have a passion for the arts but you also have a full-time job, you need something to keep you engaged with it. So I think it's really important that all these literary festivals, they have been very inspiring uh, all these years for me, myself. And uh, I look forward to meeting all the authors and the people who maybe would uh, have read my stories. I would like to what they, like know what they think. and. Uh, I'm hoping it will be really interesting. Brilliant. So be a part of it. It's happening uh, in Feb. It's happening in Colombo and Candy. It's just so easy for you to access. Kids walk in free, get a letter from your teachers or bring your student ID. Yeah. One of these will allow you in. So uh, let's make it not only a, a learning thing but also a fun thing. There's going to be lots of great things for you to talk about and be a part of. Uh, follow us for more details on the note we wrap things up. Thank you for being here, everyone. I really hope we'll be able Thank to you. get all the misinformation out. Um, on the note, we'll see you soon. Till then, keep smiling. It's a wrap.